Okay, uh, welcome to the Doodles Podcast, guys. Thanks for tuning in. I've been trying to do more of these lately. Uh, let me know. Please click that like and uh, leave me a comment down below, too, on what other topics you'd like to see. Uh, I'm trying to come up with things you might be interested in. There's, I think there's 30 or 40 now of these podcasts, so if you're really interested, you can uh, go back and listen to them. They're also available in your car on Spotify, through Apple Apple Pirate Podcasts, whatever you want to do. So uh, thanks for coming in, guys. Hey, Brett. Hey, guys. Um, so the topic of this video today and this podcast is... Um, is this the end of the sailing vlog? Um, I just want to show you some trends and uh, see what you guys think. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on in the world right now, so we don't know if uh, you know what exactly what the cause is, but there's probably multiple causes. But let me show you guys. Oh, first off, cheers! By the way, uh, I was uh, not gonna pop one of these, but somebody made a comment like, "Hey, pop in a cold one too." I'll watch this. I was like, all right, I might as well join you. So, cheers. Uh, so if you watch the last the last podcast, I have quite a few new um, new gear here, new camera, new new all that, and I'm actually uh, so we just finished uh, recording the sailing doodle season, and so back where I have internet where I can actually do a podcast not on my phone because normally when um, when uh, we do these podcasts we're just doing them on my phone because that's the only reliable internet we have. So, uh, but now I've got my proper camera and proper microphones and all that. But let me show you here. I'm going to screen share some stuff with you. And if, if you're just listening, I'll describe it as best I can. Yeah, cheers, guys. Thank you. I can't reply to a whole lot of comments today because I've kind of got this planned out. But definitely, if you do do a super chat, I'll definitely give you a shout out there. So thanks so much. But uh, okay, so this. Uh, let's see here. Screen share. All right, let me make sure that that is indeed screen sharing. It is okay. Um, so this is the a graph of the past three years, basically, uh, of views and subscribership for Sailing Doodles. I've got COVID um, highlighted there. So in March, May, April of May of 20, you can see uh, the ratings went really high because nothing, nobody had anything better to do other than sit at home. So we had our best month ever, which would have been like in August of that year, which was height of the lockdown. Um, with over 10 million views and then things started kind of going downhill uh, and then of course there was the uh, Omicron so again another little jump up and then a ever since then it's kind of started it's, it's a slow gradual decline and then a plateau and it's kind of dropping off again um, and it's not just sailing doodles I can show you here this is sailing La Vagabond uh, so they're they had a big bump when they had their baby, right? And so that was just, just off the edge of that chart, which was, uh, you know, I can't remember. It was like sometime in the summer or spring of 2019. Uh, and so they had a big bump from that, you know, 100,000 subscribers in one month alone. Um, and then, you know, they kind of rode the wave on that. And then COVID hit. You can see a slight increase in their views. Um, and then a gradual decline until Omicron. And it went back up a little bit. And it's been relatively flat since then. Uh, and then here is Delos. Um, you can see they timed their baby with COVID. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, the COVID and their baby announcement happened at the same time. So they had a huge jump right there, May of 2020, um, with 75,000 new subscribers in one month alone. And it's kind of odd that both the sailing, both those sailing channels, um, uh, really had bumps when it came to, uh, having the baby. Um, and, and I know their babies were actually born before that, but the babies didn't make an appearance on until, uh, uh, until, uh, sorry, let me get rid of this for a second until, uh, a few months after that. Cause most sailing bloggers are definitely, um, two or three months or more, um, behind. So like what you see is, uh, it, what you see being posted right now is not necessarily happening right now. All right. So then, we will go on to, uh, let me go back to that, and I've got some data, f oh, sorry, one second, and I've got some data on Gone with the Winds. So they were kind of up and down, then they had COVID, they got a slight bump, uh, not, not a whole lot there, but they've been pretty steady, and then Omicron hit, they definitely got a little bump from that. And then I don't know exactly what happened is their big spike there, but they had a video that went viral, had like three or four million views. And so that they got a large gain in that month. And then they've been relatively flat and kind of plateaued and dropped off lately, just like everybody else. So it's not just sailing doodles. It's all to all four of the, the top sailing channels. That's the top four there by subscribers. 
Um, and you know, it's just, uh, let me see here. What was the next slide? Okay. And here is a difference between, uh, what you see, what, what the sailing viewers are versus your av- rest of YouTube. So your average YouTuber is 54% male, 46% female. Um, sorry, not you guys, YouTuber, your viewer. Um, and then if you look at, I don't have the stats for the other seven vlogs I have for mine though, is 94% male and 6% female. So a bit different than your average YouTube viewer. And then also, if you look at the ages, my average viewer is over 54. So 45 and over is 75% of my viewers, whereas it's the complete opposite um, for your average YouTube viewer. So I think we do have a smaller pool to pull from. And, and so that probably makes a bit of difference there. Oh, and uh, Doug Allen, thank you so much for the super chat there. Uh, I was screen sharing, so couldn't see till just now, but I really appreciate you. Do the doodles need a baby? No, I don't think we need to do that. I'm sure, I think my mom is watching this video in the garage right now. And uh, so I'm sure she would be for that, but but no, we don't need that. <laughs> I'm uh, visiting family for a little bit. Uh, so, and then we're headed to uh, back to the Bahamas uh, in July to go sailing. So that'll be a lot of fun. Um, so... There you have it. There's been, you know, uh, a plateauing and it's been, if you look at, you know, let me go back. Um, so if you look at that, it's been relatively flat for more than a year now. So August of 21, it flattened out and, you know, all the other years kind of have an up and down. Um, and it's been just really flat, not only for us, but especially for the uh, Vagabond. They've been extremely flat. They've had one little d- um, spike there. Delos is the same way. And Gone with the Winds have had a couple ups and downs. At one month and earlier this year, they must have deleted some videos or something because you don't have negative views. Um, and kind of the, the problem with uh, all of this is that uh, by... Uh, oh, Greg Romero. Thank you, sir. He's a patron. I really appreciate it. He's a regular here on the the podcast and, uh, and, uh, everything. I, I thank you so much, man. Appreciate you. That's awesome. And cheers to you. Um, yeah, get a girl named Omicron and get her pregnant. That'd be funny. Um, so, uh, unfortunately, uh, the way YouTube works is they love their clickbait, right? Now you actually, you can't, what, what annoys me a little bit is when people call something clickbait. Well, it's in the mo- It's in the video. It's not clickbait. It, if it's in the video, it's, not clickbait, but, uh, you know, so, but you, but the thing is, is that you got to ride that fine line between getting, um, like censored on YouTube or demonetization. If you put a super sexy thumbnail on there, that's going to get a lot of views. If you put a boring thumbnail, you can make the best video in the world, but if it it has a boring thumbnail, nobody's going to watch it. And so that might be something with the kid, with the, with the channels that have kids now, the reason they've really flattened off is because it's kind of hard to do really sexy thumbnails and videos when you have a toddler running around, right? So that might be part of it. And, but the thing is, is that YouTube kind of promotes this sensationalism and uh, clickbaitiness. And because let me show you here, I've got some more slides here. Um, I probably should have just set this up a different way, but um, eh, let's see here. So head over to my next slide. So these are my top videos. Uh, you'll notice they have uh, something in common. Um, so no bikini needed, 15 million views. And you look at all the thumbnails on there and kind of sexy clickbaity thumbnails, right? Um, and then if you look at the bottom of my views there, uh, these are all like 40, 50,000 views. I mean, pretty tame. Like there's an elephant. There's me putting on a glove. There's doing maintenance and all that. So... YouTube really, unfortunately, that's just the way it is. Uh, you know, if you're not doing, um, if you're not doing a clickbaity thumbnail, you're not going to get the views. And so people kind of complain about that, but you know, I mean, what are you going to do? I mean, so that's with us for the past few months, we were in sailing in Greece for three weeks and which was an amazing place, but it was cold. Um, so we're all wearing jackets and stuff. (laughs) So there's not a whole lot of bikinis going on. And then we've been doing some sailboat racing and stuff like that. So, um, I should have, I don't know if I can actually bring this up. Uh, well, no, I can't. I'm because I'm on a different channel, but, um, you know, oh, and hi mom, say hello. Did she, did she say anything? Okay. Just 
No, she just said hello on the chat. Um, so it, it's just, and if like I noticed the last couple of the last ten videos, there's only been two where we have been like in a you know on the beach where there's bikinis and stuff like that. Echo, have you sold the dark side? Hang on, I'll get right to you. Appreciate you, Echo. Thanks so much. Um, and so of my last 10 videos, there's two of them with the girls in bikinis on the beach. Well, those are the la the highest rated viewing of the last 10 videos, right? So it's just unfortunate. I mean, it's, it's, I get it. It is what it is. I'd love to be able to just make great content and not have to put all that stuff. I mean, not have to put all that stuff, but not make that the focal point, just have it as a part of it. But you know, that's what YouTube, I mean, I got to do what's successful on YouTube because this is my job. Um, so, um, uh, it, it is what it is. Uh, so Echo asks, have you sold the dark side? No, it is for sale. I just dropped the price on it, by the way, guys, if anybody's interested, it was at 350. I think I mistimed the market a little bit. So I dropped the 299, although I haven't put it on the webpage yet at that. So there is more information on the dark side. If you are interested, um, it's a 60 foot Hatteras aft cockpit, uh, Detroit diesel, 720 horsepower, 1300 gallons fuel, two generators, five air conditioners. Everything works. Water maker, uh, high field thingy. Uh, you go to salemdoodles.com, you get more information on it there. But so I don't know what the answer is. Is it, is it, it's been more than a year now of kind of flat um, viewership and it's among all the channels. So that's more than just a, a, um, a recent trend, right? That's not just a dip because people are going on their summer vacations, right? It's been flat for a year now. Um, so I don't really know what the answer is there, but I mean, unfortunately, I mean, it's not unfortunately, but you know, um, the only thing I can see to that is it's, you know, it forces you to, to get the more clickbaity thumbnails and videos and stuff like that. People do, uh, you know, some, I, I don't read the comments too much because if you read the comments, you will be, you'll drive yourself crazy. Like I tell the girls, don't read the comments. 95% of them will be like, oh, you're such an amazing person. You're, uh, yeah, you're, you're beautiful, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But there'll be two or 3% where somebody's a butt, you know, somebody's an ass and they say something derogatory towards you. And that's the, what you're going to remember, right? You're going to remember the derogatory thing. So I don't remember where I was going with that now, but, uh, but, um, Oh yeah. One of the comments that a lot of people make is, you know, why is, why are you, why is everybody always in a bikini in your videos or whatever? I'm like, well, cause you live on a boat in the Caribbean. That's what I'm not telling the girls to put on bikinis. That's just what they put on every morning and wear. So it's just what it is. Um, so, but you know, got some stuff coming forward that I think will do really well on the channel and we'll see how that goes. So, uh, I don't, let's see here how far along done here uh been about 13 minutes wow i've talked a lot faster than i thought i was gonna but all right guys any questions in the uh the chat there that i can help let's see here uh <laughs> somebody says uh if you need to make sexy thumbnails i'll keep watching okay great yeah so the war in ukraine inflation high gas prices worry of recession might be influential on the viewership being down yeah i i meant to talk about that thank you for reminding me doug um uh Yes, I think that might be part of it. People are watching the news more than they're watching sailing channels right now because of all the stuff that's going on. Uh, and then, you know, inflation and my, and so much, maybe. Um, I would think maybe inflation and things like that might be, might drive more, more viewership uh, because maybe people can't afford to go on vacations now because they're priced out of it with gas and all that. So maybe they're staying home more. So I wouldn't think inflation would be it, but I definitely think the whole you, uh, war in U Ukraine thing could be it. Cause people are tuning in on that and on all the other political stuff that's going on right now, which, uh, I, you know, I mentioned this in my, uh, uh, in my last uh, podcast. I mean, I, I don't get into politics on here at all because that's not what you tune in for. Uh, smoke, Oliver, um, Bobby, we are older guys living through you. Yes, we enjoy the tropics and the beautiful cr uh, girls in bikinis, especially this crew. All right. Well, great. Thank you so much, man. Appreciate you. Thanks so much. Um, so, yeah, the, the news is a mess right now. Maybe that's part of it. People are paying attention more to that. Plus, it is, uh, yeah, somebody says Johnny Depp. Um, well, that thing's over now. Maybe, you know. But that's the thing. I, that's another thing on Sailing Doodles. I mean, occasionally there's been a little bit of drama, but uh, I try to make it as drama free as possible. And it has, it normally is pretty drama free. There's very few arguments or anything like that. We all get along pretty well. 
Um, and because nobody wants to, I mean, that's what, you know, TV sells is the drama and all that. When you're out cruising, I mean, there's occasional drama, but you know, that's not what you go cruising for. And that's not what you watch the shows for. Um, uh, so why not to get together with uh, all the top sailing channels and do a national campaign? Sounds interesting. I think, um, right now everybody's kind of got different stuff going on. Uh, there's a lot of new boats coming around and I don't know, everybody's in different places. I have met, um, all the, uh, well, most, uh, a lot of the other sailing channels, um, Probably the biggest one that I have not met would be Gone with the Winds, but La Vagabond and Delos and, and uh, Zatara and Zingaro and all those guys. And um, they're all really cool people. Um, so every time we're kind of in the same area, we get together. Plus, we all go to the Annapolis Boat Show every <laughs> time. <laughs> get Amber Heard pregnant. <laughs> wow. I don't know. She might beat me up. I don't know if I want to do that. No, I'm sorry. I shouldn't go there, but uh, that would be funny. Um, when can you talk about the new boat? Um, well, Actually, so if you are interested, um, you can go to sailingdoodles.com. Uh, I have a webinar that I recorded, a seminar about the cruising life, and there is information about that boat in that webinar. So I have a few slides. I have like three pictures of the boat. Um, and so uh, there's some information on that. I'm kind of getting everybody that does the seminar, uh, that watches the seminar, a sneak peek on that. It's a, The seminar is only $20. It's an hour and 10 minutes long, and it answers all your questions about hopefully all your questions about what it is like to go cruising, uh, parlay revival. Yeah. I met him too. He's pretty cool. So, uh, and then yeah, he, um, but where is Bucky? Bucky is around here somewhere. Um, his forever father is coming to pick him up today. So that'll be that. Um, yeah, Brett, thanks for posting the, uh, uh, sailing doodles there. Do not get me. <laughs> yeah. Let's not do that. Um, but I have, uh, I have some I have some pretty cool stuff I think you'll like coming up in July. I think those videos will do really well when we're cruising around the Bahamas. We did a flotilla um, with Navigar. Um, so we have eight boats. Uh, eight boats, um, all catamarans, and we're all going to go cruising around together. So they're all with Navigar, and we filled them up by individual cabins. They sold out. They sold out in like a couple of weeks. And so we promoted that on the channel. So we'll do another one of those as long as it's successful. I think... It really is is good, um, and so it's it's kind of nice to be partnered with Navigar doing that. Um, and more about that flotilla, uh, I'm picking a patron to come join us on our boat. So I've done four drawings now, just random drawings, and finally on the fourth one, got some people that said they can come. I need to email them back actually, uh, but unfortunately now they say they can't come. Uh, so. The deal with the flotilla is I'm picking a random patron to join us on a boat. They get a cabin on a boat, up to two people. The cabin is totally free to them, um, and they just have to pay their own provisions and get their way there. But that's kind of the problem that this other couple had, is that they looked at the airfare to go to Marsh Harbor and the Abacos, and it was uh, just too much out of their budget to do. And I think that prices have gone up, because there's only a couple flights a day to the Abacos. So uh, that... Um, I, what I'm what I'm planning to do now, uh, just because I've done so many drawings, and I think doing a drawing would not, I don't know, it would just be another mess. Like I'd probably go through another five drawings before I find somebody to do it. I am going to, I'll probably after this, uh, sometime this afternoon, I will make a post on Patreon asking for those of people that can go, and you know they can look at the, they can kind of preview the 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 air, you know airfare. And all that, and it's July 16th through the 21st in Marsh Harbor in the Abaco. So I'll make a post on our patrons to our Patreon or on Patreon to our patrons, asking them who can go, and then I will just do a random drawing from the people that say they can go. And if you're already um, uh, going and you're a patron uh, and you get picked, well, we can move you to our boat and we'll try to um, charter out your 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 spot. Uh, Echo, if the new cat is Maverick, name the ging dingy goose. Yeah, I've thought about that. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, the new boat will be, I've decided to call it Maverick. It's a 52-foot cat. Um, it's a sailing cat. Uh, it, it's going to have electric motors and lots of solar, um, but it will have like a 40-kilowatt generator also so that it can run those electric motors straight from the generator so that, I think that's the problem with all, all electric boats right now. Um, is that they really, 
they're not. I mean, they can go for a couple hours if they, if they're all electric without any um, generation power generation. So, but yeah, um, yeah. My mom is sad to see Bucky to go to uh, a topless server like Lazy Geckos. No, we're not going to do that. We'll never do that. So, um, I don't know if they're doing that or not. But I mean, they're good people. I've met them. So I, yeah. Um, just keep doing what you're doing. Be yourself. Appreciate it, guys. Um, and so. Yeah, the flotilla, I'm assuming it'll go well, and I'm pretty happy we're working with Navigar, so we'll try to do another one uh, sometime coming up. Uh, I don't know, maybe kind of late to be planning one. I'd love to do one in Turkey or something like that in September, but I don't know. Um, did you get a debrief on why the rig got knocked down in the Heineken regatta? They don't really know. Um, it could have been you know, a bad tune job, probably, is or uh, just a... a you know, um, a flaw in the, in the, in the, uh, material. Um, so they had, uh, a, a surveyor come and inspect the rig and they couldn't find any evidence of what was happening without having to do like, you know, without having to, I don't know, do an electric, you know, scan the uh, rig and go through all that extra expense. But it was really nice that Benito covered the material costs of it. So the owners of the boat, um, had to pay for, the labor, um, but Benito stepped up and paid for the replacement rig, which is really nice. Uh, Bob, where is Steph? She's up in New York. I'm headed uh, up there to New York uh, this next weekend, and we're going to go hang out, and uh, she's got a friend's wedding we're going to go to, and then uh, we'll do July 4th there, and then we'll come back uh, and go to the Bahamas for the flotilla. So looking forward to that. Uh, uh, what do you mean? You, my mom says she hid Bucky. He's up here somewhere. Oh, I thought he was. Bucky. Oh, <laughs> he's right next to me. <laughs> Hang on. Sorry. Let me pick him up. Oh, here. Ah. So I'm gonna miss this guy a lot. He's just now like getting snuggly. Like normally, until until like the last couple of weeks, he wouldn't even sit in my lap like this. He didn't want to be held. But now he's. I'm gonna miss him a lot. I really am. I wish I could keep him. But he's going to a good home. Uh, the, the, uh, they have two other dogs and uh, six kids. I think a couple of the kids are, are growing and moving out or whatever. But um, but uh, they're good people. So, yeah. Uh, did I ever send you the analysis of Sam? Um, and thanks, Sam. He's a patron as well. Uh, I don't know if you did, Sam. Uh, I don't know. I don't remember seeing it. So, yeah. If you want to send that to me again, that'd be cool. Um yeah, the winds are getting an HH44. I actually, I mean, before I even knew they were doing that, I tried to talk to HH. I actually got a response from, like, I don't know, their CEO or something like that. Like, I don't think he meant to do it, but, like, I emailed them, like, hey, you know, I'd love to work with you guys. Um, this was, like, a year ago or more. And um, he forwarded that email to a bunch of other people on his team, and he carbon copied me on that. I don't think he meant to do that. Um, cause I saw, but so I saw that he sent that out to his team. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, nobody ever responded. And I emailed back a couple times and nobody responded. So, but, uh, I'm happy with the people that I'm, uh, working with now. It's going to be a great boat. It's going to be a lot more. The HH 44 is a great boat. Um, don't get me wrong. Um, super fast, lightweight, all that. Um, but you know, I, I prefer, I would prefer a more comfortable, albeit slower, <laughs> Uh, catamaran over a performance cat um and so that's what i'm getting and mine's going to be very much a luxury uh type sailing boat um really nice and comfortable so um what are meg and floor up to will they be rejoining uh no they are in uh i think they've already flown to belgium that's where megan is from and then uh so they're gonna spend some time there and their family has a place in uh Spain, not sure where, but they're going to go to Spain for the summer. So, um, uh, yeah. So let's see here. Um, any other stuff I need to hit before we close this thing down there? Um, uh, honestly, I stopped watching every sailing channel that became a baby sailing channel. <laughs> Just not interested. Yeah. Well, you would be on the rare side or maybe a lot of people stopped watching, but they gained a whole new audience. I mean, if you looked at those two slides, from let me see if I can just uh, bring this back up. Um, this is all right. So this is Delos. So they had 
they announced their baby on their channel like April or so of 20. They had him in December or whatever, but you know they didn't put him in a video until April of 20. And you can see that they got a huge spike. They got 75,000 subscribers, and you know they've got a ton of views. And then uh, let's see here. I think this one's La Vagabond, and the La Vagabond. Um, made theirs public sometime in the beginning or middle of uh, of 2019, and you can see they got a huge bump. They had 100,000 subscribers in one month, and it dipped. But then, you know, look, another 75,000, and then another 75,000. So having a baby, I guess, uh, gets you real popular on YouTube. Um, so I don't know why. I, 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 I've seen the same thing, like a lot of people making comments, like, uh, no, I stopped watching when they had the kid because I don't really want to watch kids. I want to watch sailing. Um, but they gained a whole new audience because uh, <laughs> you can just see their numbers are huge. I mean, Levagabon now has like 1.7 million subscribers. Um, and then Delos has like almost 800,000 and we're 460 or something. Um, so it's just a, it's a, I don't know. Um, it was pretty interesting. I mean, there for a while, I'd have to look at it now, but like, I'd have to pull up the, 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 um, the stats, but there for a while, I mean, like we were averaging more views than even La Vagabond daily views. Um, I don't, I don't know if we are right now. Um, but let me see if I can look that up real quick. Um, uh, let's see here. Um, so we're we're averaging. Uh, let's see here. Whew, that's pretty bad. Is that us really? That's really gone down. Um, two, yeah. I mean, there for a while we were averaging four or five million views a month. Now we're averaging averaging two point three, and then um, sailing little vagabond is doing. Uh, uh, let's see here. They're five million. So, but they're they're kind of having a an up month. They've had a bunch of videos go crazy lately, so they're they're doing really well. But there for a while, we were averaging more than them, which is kind of interesting. But they've got a really good, I mean, because they're so big and they're making so much money now doing that, that uh, I mean, they can they've really up up their production value. I mean, they have you know probably multiple editors and filmers and and all that stuff. So uh, they've kind of really gotten. Uh, really up their game. So sorry, let me get rid of that there. Okay. But, oh yeah, flying doodles. I, well, I have diversified with flying doodles and glamping doodles. Uh, so glamping doodles is doing, I, I've started posting there again. Uh, David, thank you so much. Greetings from North Georgia. Maybe we'll go through there sometime. Uh, actually we did last year. Uh, but, uh, what was I saying there? Um, Oh, well, um, I'm is doing some cross branding with much of our Yeah. Um, I've been wanting to do that for a long time. I've done it in the past with limited success, uh, for other, um, um, uh, with another, uh, travel vlogger. Um, they were a little bit smaller than us at the time. And I don't think we got much of a bump from kind of doing the co-branded content. I w I've been trying to do that for a while. I've been reaching out to people for a while and just haven't been able to make it work. Um, I do have kind of a collaboration coming up in July, um, so I'm hoping that'll work out really well. Um, so, uh, but we'll see. Yeah. So they did. They did. The Vagabond did. Kara and Nate. Yeah. Cross promotion. I. Yeah. I actually reached out to Kara and Nate m m years ago, and uh, and uh, I never got a response. Um, so I don't know. Uh, Uh, sorry, it was somebody, I missed it there. Levagamon, oh yeah, it was you, Sam. Okay, sorry. Uh, I need to bring back Gigi. I don't know what she's doing now. I gotta, forget, I gotta forget, talk to her. Really like your music selection. Thank you. I actually spend a lot of time, um, it, it depends. I mean, like, because I do have an editor uh, that does, like, half the videos. And, I don't know, I've kind of been a little disappointed with some of his music stuff lately, and I've told him. But um, the ones that I do, like I did all the Grease videos myself um, and all that. So I spend a lot of time, uh, you know, I probably spend 45 minutes selecting the music just for that video, you know. And then it's and then it's another, I mean, like to edit a 15-minute video, like start to finish, like totally done everything, have the computer process, thumbnail, all that done, is probably six, eight hours, 
for me now. Um, so it's like a full day. Um, so but that's better than it used to be when I first started. It was like a 15 minute video would take like 25 hours or a couple of days, you know, so a whole week. Um, but yeah, is, is Patreon, uh, offsetting the lower YouTube viewership? Yeah. Um, so for sure, uh, Patreon has been pretty steady, uh, and, and up, I guess it's been, you know, um, it, it hasn't like dropped like the YouTube stuff has. So, um, yeah, it, it Patreon, I mean, the, the difference between, cause the ad revenue from views, as you can see, like the views are up and down you can have a great month and you're like, Oh man, this is amazing. But then, you know, like now we're getting two and a half million views a month. And so, uh, it being that fluctuating is, is pretty nerve wracking. So the Patreon definitely you can, it's something you can count on. I mean, I, I guess unless you do something really stupid. And so it's the Patreons that really make it possible. So thank you guys for doing that. Um, if you'd like to become a patron, you can do it for a little $3 and go to patreon.com slash sailing noodles. I do it. Unfortunately, um, the way, uh, uh, just cause I did it the way everybody else did Patreon back in the day is they used to create Patreon. Uh, so you you would do Patreon by the creation, right? So uh, you become a patron and you pledge $3, right? And it's three dollars per video. Um, I would prefer to have done. In hindsight, I wish I had done per month. Uh, um, but I can't change it now. That's so. I. I mean, I. I could change it, but that would reset everybody, and so then I'd probably lose a bunch of patrons. So I just can't do it. But if you do become a patron, you can. You know, you say, okay, I'm going to pledge ten dollars, but I'm limiting it to one pledge a month right so it's, it's, so every time i post a video you're not getting charged you know 70 dollars a month or whatever you're only getting charged 10 so when you sign up for that you can do that um unfortunately i can't change it now so <coughs> i'm sorry uh let's see here so you used to do way cooler stuff now you're basically the same well yeah that's partly because of covid um so for the last um, two years, basically, um, especially for all, all of 2020 and into most of 21, uh, until like November, it was, you couldn't go anywhere. You couldn't just go cruising, right? Because everywhere was locked down. You had to have a test for, you still have to have a test for a lot of countries. And so you just couldn't do it. Um, spider uppercut. Thank you. Your thoughts about detrimental effect caused by the type of side hustles that, um, gecko barefoot, etc. causing viewership. I don't think that any of their stuff would affect sailing doodles. Um, I, I mean, I don't, I don't think it does. I mean, I don't know exactly what they're doing, but what another channel does, I don't think really affects what we do. I mean, you never know, but yeah. And, uh, Jeff Strobel, thank you so much. Appreciate you. Um, so only now our places really open back up um, just in the last, like now you don't have to cover COVID test to go to um, the Bahamas anymore or, you know, places like that. But there for a while, I mean, like, you know, we, we did go to Thailand in the middle of the pandemic, but we had to go out through a lot of hoops and get a lot of tests and all that. Now um, that everything's open back up, you're going to see people going and doing more interesting things. Uh, and so I'm excited to do that. Uh, unfortunately the new boat's just not going to be ready until next summer. Um, so I would love to be able to, cause I, I, the whole reason I'm getting the new boat is I want to do a circumnavigation. So I'll go around the world, get back through the South Pacific, but, um, that's just, it's going to be a while before I can do that. Um, uh, Bob merch revenue, any good? Nah, I don't really sell too much merch. I don't, I don't push it much. No, I know like Delos does a ton of merch. Um, but I don't really, I need to be better about that. But I, I, what I have done instead of merch is I've got the sailing doodle sailing school and I've got the seminar that I did. Um, so instead of doing those kind of things, my side projects have been like, so the sailing school, sailing doodle sailing school, I think you can go to sailing doodles.com. You can find a link to it there. It's more than six hours of video instruction on how to sail. It takes you from a beginner to, um, hopefully get you enough to where you could, run your own boat. Uh, and so that's online. That's, it's got, it's like, it's 
in like six different sections and it's got uh, lessons and, and, and tests and quizzes and all that. So if you're interested in doing that, you go to sailingdeals.com and find the sailing school. Plus then the seminar, it's an hour and 10 minute seminar on what it's like to a cruising and answer a lot of people questions on like safety, costs, uh, social life, um, with pets, with kids, the different regions, all that stuff. So, and then I, I did a, a little history of sailing doodles in there. So hopefully you guys like that. Is the new boat a uh, sailing vessel or power boat? It is a sailing boat. Uh, so uh, I think being successful on YouTube is, I mean, you got to follow a, a regular posting schedule. So I post at least twice a week, sometimes every three days. Or right now I'm posting every three days. When views are down and times are tough, I actually double down and I work harder and I make more videos um, to make up for the fact that there's less views. Um, and so that's the thing is that like, if you post a video or you don't post a video for more than a month or more than a couple of weeks, even the algorithm forgets about you, right? Cause you're not, nobody's watching a lot of your content. And if you post a lot of videos, especially if they're popular videos, then YouTube will show a lot more of your, your, your stuff. I mean, like surely you've been cruising through your YouTube where all of a sudden a video, a, a, a creator that you haven't watched in a very long time will pop up and you're like, man, this guy hasn't posted a video in forever. I, you know, I, wh what happened to them? And then you go back and look at their channel and they have been posting regularly. You just, your algorithm, you know, hasn't shown you anything lately. Cause you haven't watched, like you, you stopped clicking on their videos and stuff like that. And so then if you stop clicking on their videos for a while and haven't watched it for a while, then the algorithm will stop showing you any of their new stuff. And then those six months will go by and you're like, man, I haven't heard seen from them in a long time, but they've been creating content. Uh, Cody Christofferson, I uh, love your videos. Bobby, I'm actually enjoying the dark side videos way more than I expected. I used to be a big Delos fan, but I made the solid switch to sailing doodles. Well, thank you. I appreciate you. Uh, that, means a lot. Thank you. I, I know I love those guys at Delos too, though. They're pretty great. Uh, Brian uh, hung out with him many times at the uh, Annapolis Boat Show. And I think we've run into each other a couple other times. So yeah, uh, you took the sailing school and my rudder was self tacking. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what that means. Um, Bobby, are you enjoying the heat and DFW? No, it's ridiculous. Uh, like I, I took Bucky for a walk not long ago and thought I was gonna die. I mean, like, I went for a run this morning. I went, I did six miles around the lake, not around the lake, but at the lake and, uh, had to start by like eight o'clock cause by 10 o'clock it's too hot. And then, yeah. And then uh, I've been riding my bike. I've been, cause I got, I got, I was getting a little chunky there, uh, about a month ago, two months ago. I mean, I was probably up to about 190 something pounds. And, uh, so I was like, okay, I got to do something. So I'm down to about 183 right now. I've been, I've been doing at least an hour, an hour of cardio every day. Like I'll, I'll ride my bike on average an hour and a half each time I go ride. And I do that at least three or four times a week. And then when, if I go for a run, I'll do at least an hour. Um, so just trying to get in shape. Uh, uh, you know, the older you get, the harder that, that becomes, I guess. But, uh, for the record, I watch and every video. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Uh, don't stop sailing doodles videos. Uh, no, I, oh, I'm not going to stop doing that. It's, it's again, so the title of this video had to be a little clickbaity. That's because that's what YouTube wants, right? If I had just been like, let me talk to you about we're in a lull, you know, or something like that, then nobody would watch. Right. Uh, but if I made it the end of the sailing vlog, question mark, you know, it gets a lot of views. So that's just unfortunately the way it is with sailing doodles or not with sailing doodles, but with YouTube. Um, they, they want, now there is a, a line, like if you go too far with that, so you got to straddle that line. You got to be just up to that line without going over it. If you go over that line and make something like a, a thumbnail too sexy or too outlandish or whatever, either YouTube itself will be like, no, 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 you can't put that on there. That's too much. Or you'll get backlash from, uh, the viewers. Like, uh, I don't really want to mention the channel, uh, cause I don't like talking negative, but I'm sure you, some of you guys can figure it out. They're not, there was kind of a boat building channel and they did a prank and it really backfired on them. They lost probably 30, 40% of their patrons and they lost eight or 10,000 subscribers. 
And so that's the thing is you can't, you can't, you can't fool your audience and you can't treat your, you know, so that's what I, what I try. I try not to do anything like that. Um, so no shame on clickbait as long as the videos are good. That's true. I mean, like I don't call them clickbait because like I, most of the thumbnails that I put out are actually, I take a, a, a still from the video. I need to be better about actually intentionally taking a picture as the thumbnail when it's happening. But I'm not even really thinking about that when we're doing stuff. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But most of the time I'm just taking a still from the video. And then, yeah, I clean it up, edit it up, um, do the color, and then maybe I'll put a different background on it. But it's all, everything that's generally on the thumbnail is in the video. So, so how does twerking demonetize a video? I have had two videos demonetized for showing people twerking. Uh, so like, I, but I think I actually put that like maybe in the title or something. And so, so now if somebody does that on the channel, I don't say the word, I don't do whatever. I don't know. I mean, uh, it's weird. Like, like on a thumbnail, you can put as much cleavage on a thumbnail as you want, but if you put too much butt on a thumbnail, they will remove that thumbnail and demonetize the video. I don't know why. I guess boobs are okay, but butt's not. I'm not sure. So you need to stream on Rumble. Well, I am actually on Rumble. Um, I so all the the videos that are posted on on YouTube are syndicated on to Rumble. I don't do anything other than that. Um, so anything you see on Sailing Doodle on Sailing Doodles on YouTube will also be on there. I I make almost nothing on Rumble, like two or three cents a video. Right. Um, and, uh, but I only have like 500 subscribers, but I don't promote it. So if you are a rumble person, find sailing doodles on rumble, go for it. I, you know, but sailing, but YouTube is, um, the ad rates are better on YouTube and there's YouTube has a bigger crowd. So I don't really pay attention too much to rumble. Uh, so are you releasing details on the new boat to the general public? Uh, so in this seminar, as I mentioned it earlier, uh, the Sailing Doodles seminar about the cruising life, you can go to sailingdoodles.com and there's a link to it there. Um, yes, I talk about it for about five minutes in that seminar and show you three different slides of the of the actual boat. Um, well, they're renderings. Uh, so, because they haven't, they're, they're just, I think hole number one just got, like, the hole is now um, cast. Whatever, I don't know what you call it, fiberglass, whatever. Um, and then they start on my hole in July, but you know, being that they're the first run of a brand new design and all that, you know, they're saying that once they get up and running, they can go start to finish on a boat in like three months. But you know, I'm getting hole number one and two will take probably close to a year, you know, so it'll be next summer before I can get that. Um, so, uh, are you impacted by viewers who scroll through the timeline at all? Is it watching the entirety of your videos start to finish or more beneficial to you? Uh, I mean, it's better than nothing, right? I mean, if you click on it and you want to scroll through some stuff that's kind of boring, whatever. Okay, go ahead. Great. Do that. Um, uh, that's better than nothing. Um, watch time is a pretty big factor. Um, is one of the more important factors that YouTube looks at. But I think as long as it's consistent, like if you're, you know, you may, I, I would rather you click on it and scroll through to parts you find interesting rather than not watch it all. So please, by all means do that. Uh, yikes on hole number one through five. Yeah, I understand, but, uh, eh, it is what it is. Thank you, Brett, for posting that. Um, people back to work. All I see are help wanted signs on every road, stop restaurant. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I don't think it's as bad as it was before. Uh, I think, you well, know, that, that's kind of what scares me about uh, the economy a little bit. I don't know. I mean, I mean, I'm pretty sure everybody thinks we're headed to a recession, so I don't know. I mean, who knows? Maybe already we're in one. I don't know. Any excursion planned for the Abaco? Got to go down the beach. Um, yeah, so we kind of talked. We had a, a meeting the other day uh, with Navigar, and kind of the general plan is is that Day one, we'll go to Elbow Key, which is Hopetown. And then we'll go up to Great Guana Key. Um, I think that's where Nippers is and some cool stuff. And then we'll go up to Green Turtle Key, where there's a, just a ton of stuff there as well. And then uh, we'll probably start working our way back somewhere uh, in 
intermediate because it's only five nights uh, out there. So uh, I don't know. There's not much going on at Treasure Key. They haven't rebuilt Treasure Key much. So, but we'll find some place to go. So Echo, you've been watching your Sailing Doodles videos from season two. Thank you. Uh, good content, music, and crews keep bringing us the videos. Will do, Echo. Appreciate you. And thanks for being a regular here on the podcast and the, uh, the, uh, how, what do I call it? The, the, stupid the, the premieres so i don't know does uh, you guys do you, you tell me um uh <laughs> what uh do you guys actually like the premiere stuff so like what i'll do is a lot of time is i'll premiere a video like i'll set it to go public at 5 p.m and you can find the video before that but you can't watch it until then then everybody watches it once and we do you know i'm in the chat and everything so uh, let's see here. Greg says, I want the numbers up. Uh, more TNA and rent a baby. <laughs> yeah, I'll get on that. Sure. Uh, Sam, you're part of the Jeff Bach Mafia. Is that the group you maybe can cross brand with? Um, yeah, I mean, but I don't want to cross brand with other sailing YouTubers, right? I mean, I wouldn't mind it, but like I want to break off. I want to get a new audience because like somebody that watches, you know, Gone with the Winds has probably at least heard of Sailing Doodles, right? Um, whereas somebody that watches Kara and Nate, who the Vagabond is deal with, they probably have never heard of the Vagabond until they did that. So, uh, Nick Garcia, <clears throat> um, I have enjoyed all your videos, Bobby. I've been following you since about the beginning and I've enjoyed all of them. Well, thank you, Nick. I appreciate you. Cheers to you. And, uh, and David Holly, I joined the, about the time Steph joined the crew. Cool. Well, thank you so much guys. Appreciate you. I haven't, I did, uh, I did uh, the uh, the Sailing Doodles seminar about the cruising life. I don't know, it's been two weeks ago now. And so that was an hour and 10 minutes. And I haven't talked that long in a, in a long time. I was, I, my, my throat was, there was a couple times I had to uh, drink some water to clear my throat a little bit. And we've been at it about 48 minutes now. So I'll do it. I like to do these about an hour long and then, and then move on there. So uh, you don't, you don't need the premiere notification. Every creator I watch is like, uh, Wait, where'd he go? A catch-up episode. Okay, cool. Um, uh, let's see here. Stephanie mentioned going back to school. She put that off. Yeah, um, so she applied to a bunch of um, grad schools, and she got in to, you know, several, uh, but they, although they were just too expensive. The, she got into a lot of the really expensive ones, and the inexpensive ones... Uh, it didn't work out. So she's going to re reapply to the inexpensive ones just because, you know, I mean, there's a pretty big difference between spending like five grand or eight grand a semester or whatever it was for grad school. I don't know, something like that versus the expensive ones, which were like $25,000. So, you know, I mean, who wants to go into hundred thousand dollars in debt for two years of, you know, grad school. So, uh, but yeah, so she's going to reapply for next, uh, next fall. Uh, shot just like the old days. Yeah. Great. That was kind of funny. Um, so back in the day, we used to do, um, we, we did more live chats back in the day. Uh, it was just, um, I don't know, we just did more live chats back in the day. So, But now when we do them, we do them on my phone or we do cellular data, so we do them from the boat. But back six years ago, <clears throat> you couldn't hotspot your phone. And so we had to go find a place to do... Um, these live chats, which was generally like a bar that had Wi-Fi, and so it was pretty interesting. Some you know, we'd be doing a, a live chat, and um, and somebody would uh, figure out where we are and call the bar, and then they'd order a couple shots or sometimes even a bottle. I mean, I think the first, very first time it happened, where somebody, and then it became a thing, right? So then, like people were trying to one up each other, like trying to figure out where it is and send us more and more booze. Uh, we finally had a couple times actually had to tell the bartenders, like, okay, we can't do that many shots please uh but uh this guy named his sv freaky tiki i haven't seen him in a while hope he's doing okay um but uh he found out where we were at black point at scorpios in the bahamas and uh, called them up and had a whole bottle of jack daniels sent out to us so it was kind of interesting uh blake uh, spent forty thousand for your three first for my first of three years in grad school wow Man, that's a lot. Uh, 
you'd pay money to do a doodles flotilla and the next sale GP race. That'd be pretty cool. I I've actually wanted to get into racing. I, I looked into doing that. Um, that may be something maybe I'll look into it this fall, but like get like a Corsair or something like that and do some sailboat races. But again, I would like that. And I think a lot of viewers would, a lot of you guys that are here right now in the chat would like to see some racing like that, but it wouldn't be good for new subscribers. It wouldn't be good for growth. I mean, if you look at the most popular thumbnails, I mean, because when you're sailboat racing, there's very few bikinis. Uh, Steph, hey, JB, thank you, sir. Appreciate you. Is Steph coming back? Do YouTube premium memberships um, impact your ad revenue? Um, yeah. So YouTube premium, there's a couple different. I, like I have YouTube premium. It's I think I think it's a decent deal. I think it's like my might have raised the price to like fifteen dollars a month. Uh, but I think when I did it, it was 10. Oh, I, th I thought I heard the doorbell ring. Thank you, Brett. Appreciate you. Um, uh, so YouTube premium there, well, there's two things I think he's talking about here. Um, YouTube premium is you pay $15 a month or whatever it is, and you don't get any ads, right? So none of the little pop-up ads come on and you can download the videos to watch them offline. So I'll do that a lot. Like if I'm going to be on an airplane, I'll just download 10 or so YouTube videos, and then I can just watch them on my phone while we're on the airplane. And then also kind of a cool thing with YouTube premium is that you can be playing a video and then swipe out of the app and go do something else on your phone, or even just turn the screen off and it'll still play the audio from, uh, from the, uh, from the video. And I think, uh, I don't know if it's happening on, on, on iPhone yet, but like if you have an Android, it'll actually do like a window and window thing where you can be doing other stuff on your phone and still watch the video. So, and then the YouTube premium, it does get, yeah. So those views are worth more, right? So I think the way it works is if you pay $15 a month for YouTube premium, like 55% of that. So 45% of that goes to YouTube, right? Cause that's just the way it goes, right? I mean, like they get 45% of the ad revenue the, on, on a video. Like when you see an ad, they get 45% of that too. So 55% of that $15, so call it eight bucks, gets divided amongst all the videos you watch. So that doesn't sound like a whole lot, right? So if you watch 100 videos, then each one's worth, I don't know, eight cents. I'm not doing math, sorry. But the average view that I, you know, but if you watch 10 videos, then you know, it's eight, eight bucks or you know, eight videos. Then you get, you know, a dollar a video gets to those creators. So, uh, the YouTube premium views are worth more because like, uh, uh, Bucky, Hey, Bucky, sorry. Um, Buck, Buck, stop. Come here. Hang on. Let me grab him. Uh, Bucky, come here. <laughs> but, and then, so there is channel memberships as well, which, um, is, uh, channel memberships. You pay like five or $10 a month to become a member and you get early access to the videos. Plus like you get, if you're a member, whenever you make a comment on a video, uh, or in the chat right here, it'll highlight your, um, it'll highlight your, uh, name and give you a little special badge so that I, everybody knows that you are a member. Um, so for the memberships right now on Sailing Doodles, I'm just doing, you get early access to the videos. Um, but, you know, the memberships, so say it's $10 or five bucks, I think it's five bucks. You get early access, but YouTube gets 30% of that. Whereas on Patreon, say it's, say, say that same $5, Patreon only takes 8%. They take actually 12% from new creators, but I'm on, I'm grandfathered in. So, um, I only do 8%. So. Uh, let's see here. My mom texted me. What did she say? Uh, Brett, no chicken on the porch. Yes. We got a picture of my today from Brett sent. I can't really see it, but anyway, but, uh, yeah, so, so yeah, uh, memberships and premium are both awesome. So cool. For that. I'm actually on my glamping doodles channel since I'm not doing a Patreon for that. I am doing just channel memberships on that. So, yeah. Uh, glamping doodles at Oshkosh this year. I kind of doubt it. Um, I don't think I have time. Is that in October? Is that right? I don't know if I have time, but we'll see. Go after a TV show. No, I've thought of, I mean, people have said that. And I actually think, I don't know if it's true or not, but I think 
maybe Discovery Channel approached Delos at one point in time about doing it. The problem with doing a TV show, like if you put it on Discovery Channel or something, is that they own you at that point. Like you can no longer, they, you can't make, you, you can't make Sailing Noodles YouTube videos anymore. You can't do anything like that. And then, you know, say it does one season and then fails. Well, then you're done, right? You just, you get the one season, you made a couple hundred thousand dollars, maybe. I don't even know how much they're paying for first season. You know, if you get like five or six seasons and they're renewing every year, then you can, you can do better. But no, I wouldn't do that because then they own you and then they own your content. And then if the show gets canceled, then you're screwed. So I wouldn't do that. Um, I'd rather do this. It's kind of, um, I would love to send you a donation, but not when YouTube steals 30 percent. Yeah, that's why you can do Patreon. Appreciate you. Uh, and then, uh, or you can just go to our, go to sailingnoodles dot com. You can see our our support the channel. There's a couple different ways if you want to do it. So, put your videos on DVDs. No, uh, what's up, Boomer? Uh, no, I, so uh, do you guys remember they they're actually a YouTube channel now, Distance Shores. Um, they, uh, but they only have like a hundred thousand subscribers. So they were pretty late to the YouTube game because they did DVD sales. Right. And they made, I think pretty good money doing that back in the day. Cause like you couldn't do, um, uh, I mean, you couldn't get the sailing content any other way. Right. Uh, so if you wanted to watch what it was like to a cruise in the Bahamas, you went to distant shores and bought their DVDs and then you watched them on there. Cause there was no YouTube. And then YouTube came around and uh, over a few years, basically people stopped buying the DVDs from them. And then, and then, so Distance Short started a YouTube channel to kind of continue, but I mean, they were very late to the game and uh, you know, so like starting a YouTube channel right now would be incredibly hard uh, unless, I mean, like I helped Taylor get her started, but if, I mean, don't get me wrong, she's done a lot of good stuff stuff there to do her own channel but if if it wasn't for me basically giving her her first you know by like giving my audience to her you know what i mean like so she got you know 50,000 subscribers her first month right because i promoted her videos on my channel um and uh but if she were just starting that from scratch without anybody helping her like that then i mean it, probably wouldn't have happened because I mean there's so many YouTube channels out there and there's so many people doing that now that uh you know you can't it's hard to get that content out there and get get traction on it especially you know you'd have to do it for a couple of years or more before you even made any money doing that I made enough money to live on um and uh you know how unless you're already independently wealthy why you, you can't afford to go two years without making an income so yeah uh let's see here but I'd say, so kind of getting back to everything, you know, I'd say, you know, all the YouTube sailing channels are down right now. Um, they're all pretty flat. They're not doing real well. So, you know what, when you, every time you watch a, a video, click the like button, leave a comment. It helps with the engagement on the channel. It lets YouTube know that it's a good video and then hopefully it'll show it to other people. So if you want to help out with that, that's one way you can help is just like and do all that. Um, Let's see here. Oh, there it is. Okay. Um, trying to figure out what's going on with my stuff. But uh, <laughs> Bobby is an entrepreneur. I don't know. I don't know what all the uh, what stuff was happening with that. I kind of missed the um, the uh, all the imp imp info on that. But anyway, uh, so guys, thanks for watching. It's coming up on an hour here. I've got some chicken that Brett sent over to eat. Uh, and then I'm going to hang out with Bucky for a little bit because his new, um, dog dad will be here, uh, in a couple hours to pick him up. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, uh, Greg, all the people that did the, uh, super chats. I really appreciate you. Echo JB, all you guys, um, really thank you so much. And, uh, you can like a, this is the doodles podcast channel. So if you're, this is a separate channel from sailing doodles. So please subscribe to this channel. If you want to get more content like this, plus it's also available, uh, wherever you get your audio podcasts it's on Spotify, it's on Apple. Um, I, you know, po podcasts, whatever. And so you can listen in your car. I've got like 40 episodes up or something like that. A very, a bunch of various topics going back like several years. So, and then I will put this video, um, 
on uh, YouTube or on uh, the audio podcast as well if you want to listen to it in your car. So thanks, guys. Thanks, Earl. Thanks, Brett. Thanks, everybody. And uh, we will see you on the next one.